Today, it's all about the kid. Happy hobby, I'm David Ganas, and today we are talking about nine pretty amazing facts you might not have known about the 1989 Ken Griffey Jr. baseball card. Pretty iconic card outside of the Michael Jordan Fleer rookie card or the Mickey Mantle 1952 Topps rookie card. There's not a lot of cards that are more iconic than this card right here. So most of the facts I'm going to give you actually came from this book, Mint Condition, which is by Dave Jameson. It's a book. Got these from a book, not a podcast. Wasn't from a tweet. Wasn't from Instagram. It was from a book. Imagine that. So a lot of these facts came from there. Now, now make sure you stay to the end of this video because I'm going to show you something that's going to blow your mind away a little bit. It's going to change how you look at the first three sets that Upper Deck produced. All right, so the number one fact that's pretty interesting. Most of us look back and we see Ken Griffey Jr. as the Hall of Famer that he is, but back then he had not yet played one game above Double A before Upper Deck put him as the number one card in their very first set, the 1989 Upper Deck set. They never made any cards before. He was going to be their number one guy, which is interesting because the number two fact, they were mulling over several other players for that number one spot in that set, including Sandy Alomar Jr., Gary Sheffield, who was the Double A Player of the Year the previous season. They were talking about Greg Jeffries, who was a, a card collector's dream at that point everyone loved greg jeffries in the late 80s but not so much after it but they chose ken griffey jr for that first spot now the number three fact is obviously when we see the ken griffey jr card we see him with his mariners hat and his mariners uniform this was airbrushed it was originally a san bernardino spirit uniform that upper deck had someone airbrush into the seattle uniform he had not yet worn a seattle mariners uniform and he didn't until well after this shot by the way, it's San Bernardino Spirit, not San Bernardino Spirits. Now, the number four fact is really important for card collectors. Now, since this was the number one card, which meant it was in the top left corner of every sheet of cards that they made, the 10 by 10 sheets, that meant that card was more likely to be dinged or damaged or get cut poorly. So there was a lot of damaged Ken Griffey Jr. cards that are out there even now, but a lot of them came straight from the factory, dinged up. And that leads me to the number five interesting fact. Upper Deck back then used to have a policy where if you had a card that got damaged in the product, you could send it in and they would send you a replacement. Of course, 1989 was a big season for Ken Griffey Jr. He ended up third in the American League Rookie of the Year bouting, but he was a huge prospect going forward, a big collectible. So it was a big deal that if you got a card out of a pack and it was Ken Griffey Jr., if it got dinged up or if it was miscut, you would definitely be sending that in. So because of that, all of a sudden Upper Deck is getting flooded with requests for replacements. So they had to produce more Ken Griffey Jr. cards just to keep up with the requests coming in, which meant they actually printed full sheets of just Ken Griffey Jr. cards, 10 by 10. So that's a lot of Ken Griffey Jr. cards that got flooded in as opposed to all the other cards from that set, there was a lot more out there. The number six interesting fact is back in 2010, when this book got printed, they had already said that the 1989 Upper Deck Ken Griffey Jr. card was already the most graded card in PSA's history. Over 50,000 copies were printed by then, 2010, of that one card. And that leads us into the number seven fact. Of course, 12 years later, there's millions and millions of cards that's been sent into PSA all within the last year. No, all within the last 12 years, but specifically in the past three years, think of how many cards have been have gone in and we're stuck in that backlog. Millions of cards, even with all those cards that have now been graded, PSA is caught up. Even with that, the Ken Griffey Jr. card is still the most graded card in PSA history. In 2022, there are over 93,000 copies of this card produced. And since we're talking about graded Ken Griffey Jr. cards, the number eight interesting fact is the number two and number three most graded cards in PSA's history are also Ken Griffey Jr. cards. The 1989 Flair and the 1989 Tops Ken Griffey Jr. cards 
are the second and third most graded cards in PSA history. What's also interesting is those two cards get tens, PSA tens, at twice the rate as the 1989 upper deck card does. And finally, my number nine fact that I think you find quite interesting is of those 93,000 graded cards, there are only 4,000 PSA 10s of this card, which I don't have. That'd be cool. But the most graded grade for this 1989 Ken Griffey Jr. card is a PSA 8, which is what I do have. What's pretty cool is the 36,000 PSA 8s that they have, there's about as many of those that are above it PSA 9s and 10s, as there are below it, PSA 7s and below. So a PSA 8 is probably the average of what you'd see on the market, mostly PSA 8s. All right, so now I promised you at the beginning, if you stayed to the end, you'd learn a little something that'll make you look at the 1989, 1990, 1991 Upper Deck series a little differently. Okay, so here it is. And this, again, I learned this in the old book. Reading is fundamental. Don't forget that. The 1989 set. The one we're talking about with this one has a first baseline right here on the side of the card. The 1990 upper deck set has the second base, has it going a second base, which is a line at the very top of the card. The 1991 has the third baseline, has a line on the left side of the card, like it's third base, going to third base. So now that'll just help you. Every time you see those cards, you'll know exactly which set that those cards are from just by knowing which the first, second, or third base lines that it showed. So I thought you'd enjoy that. Let me know what you think of these Ken Griffey Jr. 1989 Upper Deck card facts. What do you think of those? Did they fulfill my amazing promise to you? I thought they were pretty cool facts. Well, let me know if you have a fact about this card or what you think of these facts. Drop them in the comments below. Whatever you do, make sure you subscribe, hit like, and whatever you do, have a happy hobby.